my name is Rick Jones. I'm the Butler County Sheriff, Butler County, Ohio. Um, I just came back from a national sheriff's training in uh, D.C. Uh, three days ago, two days ago. We were briefed by the FBI director, Ray, the director of the FBI, and several federal agencies. There's 3,300 sheriffs in the United States. The President of the United States refuses to meet with the sheriffs of the 3,300. We have a hierarchy. We have a president. We have a vice president. The President of the United States refuses to meet with the sheriffs. He also refuses to meet with the police chiefs of the United States. They have a hierarchy also. He refuses to meet with them to talk about border issues or talk about crime that's going on because of the border issue. We were also told by Mr. Ray, the FBI director, that there are more red flags going off now than before 9-11, okay? When I say red flags, meaning people that are here in this country that are wanting to do harm to us. We were also explained we're, in the, we're bombing two countries right now. Two countries. These people do not like us before this started. There's thousands of people here from other countries, 160 different countries. They're here not to be our friends. It is Wednesday and it's time for Pop and Politics. We are live talking about the latest in hot topics, news and entertainment. I'm KJ. I'm back tonight. I remember last week I had taken a bit, uh, taken off because I was sick, but I'm back tonight. So happy to be back. And let me introduce you to my co-host. Once again, we have Crystal and we have Shelly E. All right, so T and Yana are off tonight. They will be back next week. Uh, but join the conversation by leaving a comment on our YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and subscribe. Subscribe to our social media so you always know when we post new content. If you miss us on YouTube, you can always check us out on Apple Podcasts. Also on Spotify, where it's there, so you can listen while we while you drive. Uh, you can check us out there. Also, we're on Rumble, always under the name Pop and Politics. Also, you can check us out on our website at www.popandpoliticslive.com for up-to-date information. As I mentioned, and I always mention, we are an independent media, and each time you subscribe, each time you uh, reach out to us, you comment, it does make our voice that much stronger, and we certainly appreciate it. We are a necessary voice in news and entertainment. All right, ladies, let's set it off. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> Happy oh, Valentine's Day. Yeah, oh, right. Happy Valentine's, happy Valentine's Day. Day. We love you guys. Yes, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. <laughs> All right. So, and thank you so much for watching with us tonight on your Valentine's Day. So, maybe we're your Valentine's. I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we also have a special guest coming out in the latter part of the show. Oh, we yeah. have Don Miller. Yes. So, from Florida. So, any of our Floridians that are watching, he's from Florida. He's right down there uh, from the what's this Florida, Man Radio. Florida Man Radio. Mm -hmm. So he's going to join us tonight at the end, sort of towards the end of the show, mid-show, virtually. Uh, virtually. So we're going to take, we have him on. We're looking forward to that. So yeah. stay tuned. All right. So we're going to get right into it. We're going to start off tonight with um, Sonny Holston. So The View's host, Sonny Holston, was shocked to discover her family's hidden history in a new episode of the PBS documentary show, Finding Roots. On the recent episode, Henry Louis Gossett 
Henry Louis Gates Jr. <laughs> revealed one of Holston's ancestors on her maternal side was likely involved in the slave trade in colonial Spain. Her third great grandfather also owned at least one human, and I quote that from the show. Let's say he was a slave owner. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Holston, whose mother is Puerto Rican and her father is black, confessed the revelation left her in shock. We're going to respond to this. This is clip number two. Take a look. <laughs> it's hard. That you're cute and submissive. It's hard. I'm a ch I'm a, I am a man repellent. <laughs> it's hard. Because all I do is go to gay events and drag shows yeah, yeah. and <laughs> anything to make a buck, save a buck. Anything to make a buck. It's hard. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm in a little bit in shock. I, I just always thought of myself as Puerto Rican, you know, half Puerto Rican. <laughs> I didn't think I was, uh, my family was originally from Spain and slaveholders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how are you feeling, my friend? Um, I just, um, I think it's actually pretty interesting that um, my husband and I have shared roots. Yeah. So I, I do appreciate that. Um, and I think it's great for our children mm -hmm. to know this information. Um, I guess it's a fact of life that uh, this is how some people made their living on the backs of others. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> this woman is such an idiot. Oh my God. She's such an idiot. <laughs> I, I, I wanna start off with you, Shelly. Yeah. I mean, why is this such a shock? <laughs> First of all, look, I don't know why anybody would have thought differently. You can look at her, right? right? <laughs> you can look at her and tell Somebody that- Somebody had slaves. That either she Somebody. was she was a slave holder's bastard child <laughs> or she was a house nigger. Yeah. Either one, you can look at her and tell. And this idea that her husband and I have shared, shared roots, do you mean that your husband and you have shared slave holder <laughs> ancestry? Come on, I'm surprised your mom didn't tell you the truth. Truth, my dear Sonny, there's no shock there. There's only phoniness because you, I believe you probably already knew it to an extent. You just didn't want to admit it. But see, being black and claiming that you were a slave is the go-to victim card. That's what, that's easy, easy to do. And that's what she was doing. Honey, you was, you spent time in the house. You were not out in the fields. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Crystal, I mean, well, I just, I think that she has lost her victim card when she uttered the words, this needs to be on every conservative <laughs> radio stage when she uttered, this is the way some people made a living. Oh. Really? Oh, not sister soldier. Not you, sister girl. Not a reparations girlfriend. Like, who paying reparations now? And I just kind of find it so interesting that she was just dismissive when it was talking about her ancestors. And then I just kind of feel like you, like, look at your skin, girlfriend, like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, and and one more thing is I'm so glad that we're getting to a conversation that from Genesis to Revelations, people have owned slaves. Right. No kidding. World. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is, this shouldn't be new, and it's only shocking to people like her who play this whole you know divide society and like these people own slaves, so they're evil, they're bad, they owe reparations. Mm -hmm. You know, my mm -hmm. people didn't. We all probably, I must say, I'm, I'm probably 99 percent sure exactly. every one of us has ancestry or ancestors that have exactly. owned exactly. someone exactly. else. Well, she not really. I mean, because the numbers. I, I, I don't know. OK, whatever. I think KJ is more on the right side of saying that. However, Carmen, you know, she reminded me of this reaction. You know how back in the day, maybe when my grandparents were little, no one told them about coming on their period and maybe how you get pregnant. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> young girls, they're in school, and then they start you know, menstruating in gym class, and they're in shock. That's, we need to have that conversation with your mother. Your mother should be ashamed of herself for not telling you that her ancestry is a directly descendant from being slaveholders. Uh, you, you know what? Your mother has left you out in the cold. Actually, again, you were in the house, nigga. Yeah, yeah but we're, the reason... How does she know? I mean, this woman is... 
She's very light skinned. <laughs> so I mean, very light skinned. It's not even like she's Dominican where, you know, they're by our, our complexion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why wouldn't she? Why is she so shocked that and she had uh, ancestry that owns slaves? That's why it, it, found it makes well, no sense. That's well, the reason why I say what I said, because, I mean, if you look at the numbers, the I mean, you had to be very, very wealthy. I think they I think the numbers are like 90 percent of like white people didn't own because like, you didn't have enough money to own slaves. So I think that is so sh I think it's so shocking that she's so rough and tough on the 90 percent of people that never even owned slaves that have nothing to do with this. And then you come to find out that Sister Soldier over there actually did own slaves and half of the people that she's attacking probably never did. Right. And she like it's like it's like egg on her face. Right, right. Right. Well, she, said, was. she did mention she did mention that uh, even though she found that she does have uh, ancestries ancestors that own slaves, she still believes in reparations. <laughs> Good. <laughs> write me a check tomorrow. Yeah, right. Yes. Right. Sign tomorrow. that check, sis. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, right. um, I mean, they just uh, she's just they're, they're the everything that they speak on, everything that they you, you, they talk about, and they, even the reasoning behind, none of it makes sense. Yeah. And, and and this was this was this was the number one, one of the biggest things. It just doesn't. I mean, it makes sense that her ancestors owned slaves, but just her whole reasoning behind getting to different things and. Talk, calling people this victim mentality. Yeah, like yeah. You mentioned, it was That's egg on her face. It yeah, was egg on her and face. and then Whoopi in that same like you know in the clip Whoopi was like I don't know um, can't you look at her and tell that she is black? No, we can't. We we can't tell the difference between her and Rachel Dolezal. I can, I can, I can <laughs> look at Whoopi. I can look at Whoopi. I know she know is passing. She is Sis, you are passing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so we're moving right along. I want to talk about this next clip we want to respond to. This is Anna Navarro. Oh, gosh. Oh, uh, and mm. she is out oh, here, I mean, about to bust a blood vessel. <laughs> defending Joe Biden, once again, the Republican in name only, the biggest rhino, literally and figuratively, <laughs> that I've ever seen in my life, uh, is on here. And she is about to lose her mind because people are saying that Joe Biden doesn't know whether he's coming or going. Take a look at this. Mm. <laughs> I've known Joe Biden for over 20 years. And I remember one of the first times that I met Joe Biden, I invited him to an event in Miami in December. And he said to me, I can't do it that day because that day is the day my, my wife and my daughter died. And every day that year, I'm, I, I gather myself and I'm alone with my thoughts. Uh -huh. and, and so, to, that's to your question of why he remembers it. I guarantee you, every parent who's lost a child yeah. remembers exactly when that day happened. I know this because my parents lost uh, my, my brother. Um, Joe Biden, I saw him on Wednesday, I saw him last week. Look, he's going to make gaffes. We all make gaffes. The difference is that he is under this level of scrutiny, that whenever he makes a gaffe like this, it becomes national news. So I went and looked up on, on, on Google stupid s stuff that Donald Trump has said. There was like an article with 82 items on it, and it was from, 19, from 2020. And he, what are the things this guy has said? He told us that injecting bleach could cure COVID. Right. He uh, called Yosemite Yosemite. <laughs> He thinks wind turbines cause cancer. Yeah. God only knows what he does about whales. There's some yeah, whales yeah. saying so much. Is, we're going to come back. No, the Trump, point. Trump and Biden. No, but the point. No, no, but here's the point. Though, here's the point. You get panicky over Joe Biden making a gaffe. Republicans don't care. They don't. They don't care that but Donald Trump says country, stupid things. But every single. But a lot of this. Do you think changing candidates in the middle of a race when people matter. have already voted? It, this is not like changing your underwear. In the middle of a race. People have already <laughs> voted. There's already yes, delegates but, but, that have been apportioned. I don't know how many times I have to say this. This is a binary choice between evil and good. That's right. Between moral and immoral. But it doesn't between have an effective uh, president and an ineffective president. And that between is why you, you need the best fighter. Man and an egotistic it's why you need the best fighter. That's the binary choice. That's the one we have to make, like the Super Bowl. Or one wins or the other. Wow. Wow, exactly. <laughs> All right, I, I want to give your thoughts on this, Shelly. Okay, let me take a breath first. Um, let me do this real quick for Krista, because I'm going to say Trump, and I got to go here. Ah. Uh, Krista, this is for you today. I brought the honey for you, dear. 
But let me say this to Miss Navarro. Number one, parents don't remember their children's death when they have dementia. They don't. So that is a lie. He does not remember because he has dementia, in my never-to-be humble opinion, since I'm not his medical physician. But that's why he doesn't remember, because his cognitive faculties are not in order. That's number one. Number two, for every time Trump made a gaffe, the media was apoplectic yes. about it. Remember Kofefe, right? Mm -hmm. Remember she mentioned the COVID, uh, the bleach injection? She mentioned that, recalling Yosemite. He said Yosemite, whatever he said. Every gaffe that Trump made, you all, Anna Navarro, and the media, you went crazy like it was some like the world war like world war three was coming or the world was coming to an end and i have you have a binary choice i have a quinary choice dumb dumber dumbest dingbat and dingo <laughs> those are the five choices that i have for you all these are the choices that we're given when we have to sit up with the likes of you all dumb dumber dumbest dingbat and dingo there you go right. Right. And not only, like you mentioned, that they did, they were on Trump oh every God. single time every he time. said something. Even when he was, didn't say it. Right, and that's what I'm about to say. Right. They, not only did they do that, but they made up stuff. Yeah. <laughs> she mentioned Charlottesville. This is the biggest lie exactly. that, we, we, that, that they have continued to push and push and push and push. Michael, was it Michael Rappaport? Is that his name? Yes. He's a redheaded uh, actor. He came out this week. If you guys, I, I, I encourage you to research yep. this. Michael Rappaport, he's an actor. He was one of the, he hated Trump. Uh, yeah. And he was very vocal about it. He was one of these people where you pro he probably had Trump derangement syndrome. Oh, yeah. And this week, or actually last week, he came out and said he finally watched the Charlottesville video and it was a lie. Yes, it yes. Was a lie. And I've been screaming to the top of my lungs because, yes, they literally change around everything. Even when she brought up the whole bleach thing, yes. he didn't say you should inject bleach, but y'all just take every single thing that he says and switch it around to make it a gaffe. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, is your president, Anna Navarro, because you are not a conservative and you are not a Republican, only people that believe that is your dumb co host, right. you are not one. Your president, who you've had dinner with, won't even meet meet with the sheriffs, dum-dum. Right. Right. Did you tell them that, hey, you should probably meet with the more important people, or oh, you think that his priority should be meeting with you and your people? He won't even he won't even come to the Super Bowl and address he, millions of people. He he's not even he, physically or cognitively he, able. He, and so you just told the world, dummy, and I'm sure he would love to know that you told the world that he would speak to you and talk to you because you are so important, but he will not even go talk to the people that are running this country, which are our sheriffs and the southern border. Right. Yeah. It is not. Yeah. Remember, another uh, another quote unquote gaffe that they wanted to accuse Trump of was again starting the war with North Korea when he called uh, Kim Jong whatever which one he is uh, Rocket Man right and and they want oh you're gonna get him excited he's gonna start a war no what did he do he backed down right yeah. they want to make everything into this big brouhaha when they have nothing to bring to the table except confusion and chaos and this cognitively defined declined man that we call president right. yeah and it's so funny they always say like trump's gonna bring you back and change he didn't do that trump is gonna start a war he had peace the entire time trump is gonna do this trump is gonna do that the fact of the matter is is it's not a good versus evil at all you are like if, if you i think jill is the most evil girl get your husband yeah. oh, get yeah. your man it's, 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 just it's get your man abuse. remember it's the elder choices. abuse remember the quinary choices dumb Dumber, dumbest, dingo, and dingbat. Yeah. Remember, those are the five choices that we have. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and not only that, but the, the way that they you heard about this week, where you know when when Trump says something happened, and the media and the people on the View yeah. say that he's lying or he's missing misinforming. What look, look at this week when they said now that's come out proof that they the were CIA were spying yep. on him. Of course, mm -hmm. they, they were spying out. on him.
on him. Exactly. The and whole Russian, what is it, Russian yeah, game? Yeah, no, right? but now they're saying that it wasn't not just the uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign. It's confirmed. It's been confirmed that they yep. were spying on yeah. him. Yeah, and it's and it's so unfortunate. But I love I love Trump because he just he don't. He don't respect these people, and that's what they're mad at. He's not on the phone with Anna Navarro. Right, like he's right. just, he, you know, he don't respect these people. He don't like these people because they're dumb. I mean, seriously. Yeah, but you brought up a good point about the Super Bowl. You know, this has been a tradition for presidents for many, many mm -hmm. years. Yeah. To um, you know, this was actually this Super Bowl was the most watched Super Bowl yeah. in a very long time. This was a great opportunity for Mr. You know, Bubonic uh, <laughs> Biden to get out there and and show that he's got all of his faculties and senses. Nope. And what did he do? He cowered. He he didn't he didn't show. And once again, we're, we're moving. Speaking of the Super Bowl, I, I want to move on to that. I want to mm -hmm. talk about that. Um, so. I want to talk about this black national anthem. So oh, if anybody brother. who watched the Super Bowl, it was opened up by uh, singer uh, uh, Andra Day. Uh, she opened it with the black national anthem uh, singing. Take a look here. This is her. Lift every voice Andrew Day kicks off Super Bowl 58 with the first performance of the night, belting out her own rendition of the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, moments before the Kansas City Chiefs and San Francisco 49ers hit the field. I was so nervous, but very, very excited, grateful. Sorry. Um, <laughs> you look like her breath stink. Like you can smell her breath literally from here. Gee, I thought it was terrible. Oh. I thought it was I terrible. Th and I knew it was going to be good. I don't even. She has a very distinct yes. voice. <laughs> she has a very distinct voice. And when they said she was singing Not it, I song. said to myself, I said, this isn't going to be good. Nope. Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. But not only just that, I want to start off with you, Shelly. I mean, was this appropriate to no. have this song at the Super Bowl? Okay, <laughs> I want to echo what you said. I thought it was horrible. The the, the, the script, the, uh, the reporter, talking about she's belting it out. She actually did. It was belt, like, oh, like she was belting, uh. right? That's how she, it was horrible for her voice, number one. Number two, you can look at Andra, how you pronounce her name? Andra. You can look at Andra and see that she probably was a house nigga too. So, I mean, you know, she, she, <laughs> oh, you, know, her, you can look at her, right? So this black national anthem, number three, please, please somebody tell me where this black country is that we can use this anthem for. <laughs> I, mean, I'm sorry, I just want to know, well, where is it? And we said before, it's a beautiful song. I learned it in, in uh, elementary school, nevertheless, but to sing it at the Super Bowl, I, I don't think it was. I don't think it was the right thing to do. And I'm going to say that I understand the NFL is a private corporation; they can do whatever they want. But I think it's it's really set up to show more division or to cause yeah. more division because there's if a white person wanted to sing a white national anthem or Hispanic national anthem, how did they choose the black <coughs> over the other people or other groups? That's what I have a problem with. And I have a problem with her singing that song. I mean, it, it was awful. I, I thought it was awful. It, it causes more division than it does unify, in my never to be humble opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hate I didn't hate it. I thought she sounded beautiful. Oh, like gosh. I did. I thought she sounded and you great. Sing? I love the lift of your voice and sing. Like, you know, we used to power to I just think that it's so narcissistic, kind of like what I'm I'm so sick of black people, y'all. I'm serious. Like, we gotta have a black this and a black this. I thought y'all don't like separate but equal. Like, we were trying to do the separate but equal, but y'all wanted to sit on the white man's bus and eat the white man's burger, so they let you come over and do that. And now you want your own national anthem. Then we're gonna have, like you said, a Chinese national anthem very soon. Then we're gonna have a Mexican national anthem, a Nicaragua. Like, like, it's too much. And I'm telling you, it's getting overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to sing it wherever you are, fine. The song, There's nothing wrong with the song. 
we used to sing it when we were in school. Right, yeah. But it's y'all, you if you live here in America, your national anthem is Oh say can you see? Yes, it yes. is the Star Sing Spangle Banner. If you would like another one, suit up. Yeah. Put on a uniform. Fight I for did. it. I did. <laughs> you did. Fight for it. If you want a new one, what? then then what? find it. Yeah, uh, I mean, and, and let me go on to say, Lift Every Voice and Sing is one of my favorite, yes. most favorite songs. Yes. It's a beautiful song. Yes. Um, you know, we sang it in church. Uh, you, you know, as it coming up here in Baltimore City, I went to a predominantly black school. We would sing it a lot in school. Um, <clears throat> and so it's good for certain situations. But it's not our national anthem. <laughs> no, it's not. No, no. A national anthem means country. It should be something that represents the country, and we have one. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> I don't understand why they continue to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, it's the vision. It is the vision. And just like we talk about, what is this, black? <coughs> Again, where is this black nation? I just want to know where the black nation is and why aren't the black people there yeah. that, that claim to want to uphold this, this national <coughs> anthem, which it is not, it is, again, it's divisive to sing it in my never-to-be-humble opinion at the NFL <coughs> or anywhere else that there is a national audience and a national uh, NFL play, whatever the case may be. Sing the Star Spangled Banner. <coughs> if you want to sing and lift up your voice and sing in your private air, do that yeah. by all means. But I think, again, this is the vision. It's divisive. And it really does not lift all of us up yeah. as they claim to want to do. Yeah, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. It really is overwhelming, you guys. Like, it, 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 you want you want it to be something that it's not. Right. Like, and the fact of the matter is, is that we cannot stop and have a national anthem and in a national, like I see Macy Gray say something like, oh, I think we need a new flag. <coughs> suit up, nobody is willing to fight. <laughs> like, suit up. That stuff got blood on it. I mean, the Star Spangled Banner has blood on it. Our flag has blood on it. Like you didn't just, <coughs> ups and get that right. and so for you guys to just be pushing pushing i'm telling you people are getting tired of black folks yeah. they are right not only suit up if you don't like the national anthem here <laughs> go make your own country and make your own wakanda <coughs> go sing the chinese national anthem or the russian national anthem <coughs> or wherever the french wherever you want to go uh, in france canada go ahead i mean who's stopping you in america remember you still have the freedom to leave any damn time you right. want yeah. and no way no, no other place will put up with this crap i mean no. like th just to show that we're even talking about this and we are allowing this shows how gracious of a nation we truly are because no one else will put up with this crap no all right so we're moving right along again if you haven't done so already please subscribe yes. hit that subscribe uh button and hit the notification bell so you always know when we post new content we are live here every wednesday night at 8 p.m we do pop on sometimes on the weekends and things like that. So if you hit the notification bell, you know when we are about to go live. All right, so we are moving right along. We have, again, as I mentioned, coming up in a little bit, we have uh, Don Miller. Don Miller, yes, from yes. Florida Man Radio. So stick around. He will be on in about five minutes. All right, so we're going to move on to this topic before he comes on here. Uh, another thing with the Super Bowl is the He Gets Us. So very controversial. This was, uh, again, during the Super Bowl, a commercial that played. I'm just going to go ahead and, and let you guys play it. Take a look. I was standing. You were there. Two worlds collided. And they could never. All right, so um, that was the foot washing spot. Featured a slew of people, as you guys saw, washing the feet of men and women from various life backgrounds and perspectives uh, different from their own. So as you saw in one image, an individual assumed to be a protester outside of an abortion clinic, 
washes the feet of a woman presumed to had or to be considering an abortion. Uh, so these were all AI generated images. Mm. Again, this you know kicked up a lot of dust with conservatives, with evangelicals. I want to get your thoughts, uh, Shelley. Did did you think that that was a a valid depiction of biblical Jesus? Okay, I didn't think the commercial was. <clears throat> I thought it was relatively innocent enough. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually liked the music to it. I didn't, I, I didn't, I'm not expecting, I would not expect, I guess, I'm assuming these people are non-Christians, I guess. So no, I it was, it's actually okay. put on. It was put on by Christians. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So, all right. So again, I would not, I'm not expecting any commercial, whatever, however time frame it was to have this whole um, full idea of what Jesus was. I thought the commercial was relatively innocent. I don't think it was necessarily pushing an agenda per se. Yes, some of the uh, images used in there, you can debate them like the abortion clinic. And I think there was another one with a guy who looked like he was maybe, uh, you know, a dick trying to be a chick. But um, <laughs> again, I thought it was relatively innocent compared to previous or some other Super Bowl commercials. So I didn't really have a big problem with it. Your... Yeah. No, I definitely think that these people have an agenda like they always do. It. I, I didn't see anybody with a, uh, a Republican Make America Great Again oh. shirt. I guess Jesus wouldn't have washed our feet. I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean, like, it's all manipulative, like the abortion clinic yeah. and all of that. Mind you, like you said, I do think that it was innocent um, for, for the watchers. I think it was innocent. Yes, we are called to love and I do believe that Jesus calls us to serve because he did wash Judas's feet just like he did you know all the other disciples however Jesus does call you to sin no more so that just because you are to serve and be kind and be respectful to everybody that's not a Donald Trump supporter you're supposed <laughs> to be kind and respectful to it still doesn't excuse the behavior and so that's the thing that annoyed me a little bit about the commercial is because these people are just so fake and phony they push acceptance to everybody except people who vote for trump vote for trump uh huh wait, wait a minute keep us to trump hey yeah. <laughs> you know that's my president y'all <laughs> yeah i um i thought it i thought it was i was disappointed okay. i thought it was a missed opportunity it once again and again we've gotten into this culture where jesus is portrayed as this you know it's all about love, yeah, yeah, love, yeah. love, love. We see this all the time and it's not, we don't hear anything about repentance. Yeah. We don't hear anything about repent of sin. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, again, as you mentioned, Jesus did wash the disciples feet, mm -hmm. but he washed them. He washed the disciples feet yeah. who were repentant <clears throat> sinners. We're all sinners. Yeah. We're not, nobody's saying that, right. you know, nobody's perfect. If we were, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. But the most important, I think the most, it was a lost opportunity, yeah. I would say, to show that. To yeah. show that it's not about Jesus getting us, it's about Jesus changes us. Right. Yes, right. yes. And yes. so that's what we miss. We're missing the changed life. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and that changed life and then the joy you get from the changed life, from the uh, connection and when Jesus enters your life. And so I wish that was sort of, that wish that was shown more in, okay. in, the, uh, yeah, in, I, in the commercial. I, I agree 100%. Mm -hmm. I, I, I guess I just, I looked at it more like service right. and we so are called one to aspect serve. Of Jesus' ministry was yeah, service. Was service. I but it. however, like I just, I, I, these people are not servants and they're and not agree, kind and they're not. And it probably to me would have been that way if it had not, if they had not used the depictions that were so mm -hmm. uh, uh, different. Mm -hmm. So you have these uh, pro-life mm -hmm. protesters in the background. So they're sort of meant to look be is portrayed upon as bad, and then one comes oh, out yeah, and yeah, washes yeah, the yeah, feet yeah. Right. of this person. You know, you have these people who are um, looking at gay people, you know, badly or funny, and then you have this one person comes out and washes this gay right. man. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, okay. And the gay man's not washing anybody's right. feet, right? Not <laughs> that, it's, it's That's showing, what I'm saying, yeah. It's the gay man that, doesn't have to serve. Right, yeah. and it's showing that these people, it's kind of like these different ends of the spectrum. Yeah. One's bad, one's good. Yeah. Like yeah, that. they they did feature the the ads or the people that they use mm -hmm. as against each right. other. Mm -hmm. But again, I hear you. I hear you there. But I think 
they were trying to focus on at least one aspect of Jesus's ministry, which was service. On the other side, like what you're saying, we use this love all the time because Jesus did say, you know, I don't, don't hate your enemies. I want you to love your neighbors and love them. So again, it's a very short commercial. Can't expect much, right? However, there were some, you know, diametrically opposed themes going on right. that maybe could have been developed or at least presented a little bit more fairly, if that's the word you want to use. And yeah. they never have to serve anybody. Like I said, the gay person doesn't have to serve anybody. The abortion clinic is not giving muffins and coffee to the people protesting. No, we're always the one that have to be serving. You right. know what I'm saying? Not the people who are offensive to us and our God and our morals and our principles. Yeah, and this is the, but, but yeah. This is the uh, this is the the depiction we see all the time now. Mm, right. And we have a a, 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 a comment here. It's, can you read that, Crystal? I can't see. Can you read Christ, that? Christians let the LGBT. <laughs> okay. So C C D A Way twenty four says Christians let the LGBTQ and everybody ish on their religion. Poop. This is why there's no respect. Try that. This is why Christians had yeah. Try yeah. that ish in Iran. Got it. Yeah, I mean, and it's not even about respect. I, I, I agree. I totally agree with him, or he or she, but it's not even about respect, really, at this point. It's about showing the Jesus, the Messiah of the Bible. You know, nobody's going to... I don't see how that commercial brought anyone I agree. over. You know, to me, because... It just, it was more of a, as we see, affirming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was more about affirming. And we need to get out of this culture of affirm and move into change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and I don't, I just didn't see that in that commercial, whether it be short, you know, if you have that timestamp on there or not, it was a lost opportunity to me to show, yes, we all know this is what they all keep saying. Right. Jesus loves, Jesus yeah. loves. Yes. But it's about you being having a changed life. I agree. You know, I agree. And so that's what and I, I mean. But I don't expect anything different from these people. Well, it was what actually was group was yeah. Group? That's what I was about to say. So Kristen uh, Hawkins, who is a huge pro life, she does the uh, oh yeah, I know, uh, I know Kristen. Yeah. Right, right. So she put out a post. She says, since people seem to have very strong opinions about this, let me show you another perspective. I saw that. From, from our extensive research from the Pro-Life Generations Dimitri Institute for Pro-Life Advancement, we know that the majority of those in the middle on abortion think of pro-lifers as angry. So she, and then she goes on to say Christians mm -hmm. launched this, he gets us. Okay. Uh, pro, uh, I'm not about to say propaganda. I mean, it, it looked like propaganda. Oh, it's um, propaganda. It, they did it. So this, the people behind this commercial were Christians. Okay. Um, but again, okay. they're not. Just, yeah, these. I okay. mean, Christians is a very loose term right. here in the West, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I don't expect anything different from these people. All right. Okay. Well, um, yep, that's what we uh, have here. So um, again, please continue to watch. Share this broadcast and subscribe. If you have not subscribed already, what are you waiting for? We have a lot more in store for you guys tonight. Um, but I want you to subscribe so you always get our content. We are building a community here. And each time you subscribe, it does help make our voices that much stronger. Yeah, right. All right. We are a necessary voice in news and entertainment. All right. So we're going to bring on our guest at oh, okay. this time. Oh, okay. We're going to bring him on. Is he on? Yes. Uh, so we have here, if we have him here with Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, he's not on yet. Okay, all right. It's, it's 830 now. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought we said 830. Was it 830? 845. Sorry. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> we are, all right, so before we move on, we're gonna before we bring on our guests, we do we're gonna we're gonna conquer one more couple more topics here. All right, so this is another one here, Planned Parenthood. So Planned Parenthood put out a sex education video. Oh, God. Um, recently, actually, it was last week, uh, and um, the video uh, declares that virginity is completely made up concept, a term that was created simply to control and shame people, mainly women. Uh, this is what they're saying. Take a look here. Take a look at this clip. Another reason the idea of virginity is complete nonsense is that sex means different things to different people. Generally speaking, society tends to define sex in a very narrow way. Penetration, 
penis into vagina. But where does that definition leave queer people? Or folks who can't or don't have penis and vagina sex? and choose to have oral, anal, or another type of sex instead. And not everyone's first sexual experience is consensual, meaning that they were forced or pressured into having sex. There is also a double standard on who carries the burden of virginity. Society puts pressure on men for not having sex at the exact same time they shame women for having it. Make it make sense. Either way, shame has no place in someone's personal decisions about sex. It's time to throw away the notion of losing your virginity. Wow. So that is supposed to go out to middle schoolers. Mm. You have here Mrs. Robotnik on here trying to give information to middle schoolers about sex and really saying virginity, what is it? It's made up. Your thoughts, Shelly? Whew. First, <coughs> um, I would say... I'm so embarrassed. I'm, I, first, I would say... Um, What's her name, KJ? What'd you call her? <laughs> Ms. Robotnik. Uh, yeah, rectangle okay. Robotnik. Um, yeah, at first I would say, outside of virginity, you need a good bra. Um, know. You know, I want her to get a good bra. <coughs> so, well, you know, that's a, right. that, you know, that's a oh, that constraining, okay. so, you know. So let me say this. <laughs> let me say this. <laughs> this. This should not be taught, quote unquote, to middle schoolers. This is, this is propaganda, mm. right? This is indoctrination. Middle schoolers don't need to know about, certainly not from someone who is not their parent. They definitely don't need to know about someone putting their penis in their mouth or in their butt uh, in, in, in any other orifice in their body. Now, the fact that she's talking about this weight between men and women, yes, historically, women have carried the burden of being virgins or considered virgins, sometimes in different countries in different times or different eras, they have been stoned to death, beaten because they were not virgins or considered. Well, she says no such thing as virgin. No, no, no. She says no such thing. <laughs> she, I know she does, right? She says that. But women, <coughs> have, but let me say this to all of you out there, okay? First of all, there is no medical test of virginity. Zero. There is no medical test of virginity. However, putting this pressure and confusion on middle schoolers is nothing short of evil. And you're setting them up for failure emotionally, physically. She even goes to mention something about, oh, well, some people have sex and it's not in their consent. That's called rape. That's called assault. That's not even, should, should not even be taught in the idea of this idea of good sex, if you will, and virginity. These people are destroying your children. Get them out of the hands of these people in the schools, in the so-called sex education, uh, education classes. Get your children out. These people are so evil. Who it's, the hell is she to tell it's, a somebody else's child exactly. that it's no such thing as virginity? There is a such thing as virginity. Now, you may not be able to test for it, but you know whether or not you've been penetrated. Period. Okay? So who is she to tell somebody else, especially not only just any other parent, but people of different faith backgrounds believe in being pure, believe in virginity, and who is she to say, oh, it's no such thing. Actually, you should celebrate. It's not right. about you not being a virgin. It's about when you, when you get ready to have sex. It's, this is yeah, and then the fact that they always get the fat, out of shape black woman a good boy. that look, you know, that that look like she probably ain't had no sex to try and teach middle schoolers about sex. And it's so amazing to me, you guys keep trying to teach these kids about having sex. First of all, it's weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they don't need your help. <laughs> they don't need, it's, see, it's, it's funny how natural this thing is. They don't need your help learning sex. They need your help with math and reading and down here in Baltimore. And Baltimore, and Baltimore and exactly. Math. They need your help with reading. How about how about teaching them how to be a mother to the to the se for the sex? How about you teaching them how to grow up and be a responsible adult? You're trying to help them with something that they seem to be learning and handling just fine without you. Oh, You're no. a creep and a pervert. Oh, yeah. they want to though. This is the point. <laughs> this is the point. They want to encourage sexual it's intercourse. Gross, right? They're trying to encourage it, as you can see. And, and she's talking, this is just one video. She has another one out that goes into detail about sex and things like that. But mm -hmm. they're encouraging 
young people, this is why they say, oh, virginity, what's that? It's no, that's no such thing. Start having sex right away. Start right. pleasuring yourself right away. Ugh. Get right into it. And then if you get pregnant, come to act to us and get for abortion. Uh, your abortion. An abortion. Yes, yeah. right. exactly. Instead right. of in it's the never ending cycle where they can like we talk about uh, the medical, the medical industry will have these pharmaceutical pharmaceutical cycles. And they can keep feeding you, feeding you the drugs. Same thing here. Get the people pregnant, get the young people pregnant, get them emotionally unprepared to have sexual relationships. Again, being penetrated in all of their orifices. Right. Then they're not prepared. Go to the abortion clinic. And who is left to carry the baggage? Your parents. Yeah, you remember oh, back now. in the day? You remember back in the day when we used to have to take care of the egg oh. or take care... Like, and we focused a lot more on being domestic and caring for a child. Okay. Y'all keep trying to teach these kids how to do something that they don't need your help with. Oh, <laughs> like, they are... Them out of the pub. And then, and, then, and then you're bringing in anal sex and... Right. Or like it's just so perverted, and you sitting up here worried about Donald Trump, and you worried about Republicans. These are your true national like threats. These yeah, these yeah. are these yeah. are these are terrorists. Okay, yeah. because they are killing our future. Right, yeah. right, and not only that, but you know the idea of them taking this personal topic and talking about it to your children. Yes. I mean, every parent should be up in arms about should this. Be. I mean, and, 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 and honestly, I don't see how you continue to vote Democrat because no. this is the Demo Planned Parenthood is the arm of the Democrat Party, yep. just like BLM right there, is another arm of it, right? And and they are they're lock, stock, and barrel with these people. And so they know this, they're doing this, they have given the okay for this. And so this is, if you want this type of stuff going on, this is what's going to happen if you continue to keep voting for these exactly. people. Yeah. So you talk yep. about these suburban moms, yep. you know, who are so antsy about uh, voting for Trump. Um, then then you get this. Exactly. Yep. The, I got a new acronym. Oh, here I go again. A new acronym for the KKK and the Democrat Party. KKK means kill, kill, kill. Kill, kill, kill. Because that's what they're doing. They want to kill America. They want to kill our babies. They want to kill our young people. They want to kill their futures. They want to destroy. They are nothing except engines of chaos, confusion, and death. That's what they are. Get your kids out of their hands. Yeah. I do want to acknowledge our super chatter oh, here. Yeah. We have a super chatter tonight. That yeah, is good. Krista. <laughs> Here you go, Chris. I got the honey for you. <laughs> God. Uh, so, oh, thank you so much, Krista. Happy thank Valentine's you. Day to you. So thank you so much <laughs> for that. All right. Uh, so uh, we are going to move right I'm along. Don's on right now. To, okay. okay. No, okay. Yeah. We're going to move right along to our guest. Yeah. So we're going to bring on Don Miller with Florida Man Radio to talk with us about our next topic. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hi. Hey, Don. Hi. Y'all, boy, y'all rubbing these white folk the wrong way now. Ain't that <laughs> <not good there? laughs> Look, you got to play it cool with the cigar. Uh, hell has no fury like a woke white. <laughs> <laughs> like a woke white. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, talk. To, well, first, I want to introduce you to our audience. Can you just tell us about your, um, you, you, what you're doing there in Florida, your broadcast, and where can people find you? You can find me uh, on all social media platforms, The Don Miller Show. Uh, I've been doing this for many, many years. Okay. I've been singing the same tune for many years on a, a lot of different platforms. Uh, but I uh, am honored to join you, ladies. I like what you're doing. Uh, Crystal, thank you for popping in with us a few times on our show. We are currently broadcasting in uh, several markets on the Florida Man Radio, uh, significant markets in the Southeast. And so we thank you. Thank you so much for letting me pop with you. Oh, Thank nice. Nice. So uh, the reason why I, KJ, I mentioned to KJ about the topic that we're getting ready to talk about. It oh, was yeah. so hilarious. And no, that was you. You made it hilarious. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. I'm not going to introduce it, but I was, I, I just wanted to know, like, get him started as to why we invited him. Yeah, please. <laughs> I, I, want, I was going to say that you were, uh, he could introduce the topic as far as what, um, 
It's, so can you talk about it? Okay, so a gentleman. So I, I went on to Don Miller's show. You guys got to listen to him Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. on Florida Man Radio. But we were talking about a gentleman who has now come out mm -hmm. as a straight man, but he lived his life as a transgender woman. Um, for several years, got body parts that um, <laughs> are consistent with the female sex. But now he is claiming that God changed his life. Congratulations to him. But now he is do we have a clip? trying to be a man. Yeah, we do have a clip. We do have a <laughs> clip. I want you, you guys to take a look at this. This is clip number seven. And then we're going to respond. <laughs> And I already know it's coming, so I'm going to clear it up in advance. Like, oh, how he going back to being a man? And he still got them big old. Guess what? The devil tricked me into getting all this stuff. And it didn't happen overnight. And God has delivered me mentally and spiritually first. So these, 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 these are just the demonic attachments I got to get off me. God has already delivered me mentally and spiritually. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God is good. He's already delivered me. I feel it in my bones. I feel free. I feel like I'm not walking around in a costume. I feel like I'm not, I'm not walking around in a mask. And trust me, I've been impatient all my life. Trust me, I've been impatient all my life. This is the one thing I read a lot of scriptures about patience. Because this is not me this time. This is God. He's just using me as a vessel. Lord, I finally get it. I finally get it, Lord. You just want to use me. And Lord, I'm available to you. So just, just stay tuned. It's all coming off me. Trust me. Wow. <laughs> if you don't sit your sis ass down somewhere, thank with you, your big ass titties. Thank you, you got You would have got titties, dog. Cut the shit, okay? If you don't sit your sis ass down, but this is the problem with that whole thing, right? Look, do I believe the Lord can wake you up in the midnight hour and change your circumstance? Absolutely. Donnie McClurkin lied and said he changed his, but he still like men's, okay? <laughs> you got boobs, man. You got gigantic ass boobs. I'm sorry. I'm inappropriate. I apologize. No, we love it. You Shelly type. <laughs> no, but think about this. The problem with that is that that damn Crystal said on the Don Miller show that she would date a dude like that. Yeah, I heard that too, Don. I heard her say that too. So that's the question. That's what we wanted to talk about. You know, ladies, would you... I mean, he, would you date somebody, you know, that has, he's clearly praying man. He made he's a mistake. bottom. He's a bottom. He ain't making no mistake. I, I, look, that's not the question you asked. Yeah. What, let me answer this question. He's a pillow biter. Let me answer the question. Would I date someone, I'm, I'm a biological man that's been quote unquote transgender and now he's back to being a man again. I'm going to answer this as ladylike as I know. <laughs> Hell fucking no! <laughs> get the fuck out of right. here! Get, 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 you got me, you got me cussing on Valentine's Day, Don. I mean, no, damn. the problem no. is, For, the problem first is of all, he... I don't. First of all, no man, I'm t a gay man who was once practicing gay, transgender, whatever sexuality that he claims to be, I don't care what he says he is right now. He's still a biological male, but he's not a heterosexual male. I don't care if he's abstinent or being celibate. Right Right now, I don't give a goddamn what God he's claiming changed him. Maybe he did, maybe he did, but he done sure is he's still gonna be thinking about and screwing other men. Hell freaking no. And any woman Crystal oh, that says she would, something's wrong with her. But but, but think about minute. this. Wait I, I no no, I think Crystal. I think Crystal would do this until he came home and asked, could he wear one of her bras? <laughs> <laughs> well, what, are you, what were your thoughts? You said I would, I would give him one of my bras, y'all. <laughs> I'm serious. Okay, so I, I really thought about this. Like, seriously, like, if I am a single woman, and I'm not single right now, so it's easy for me to say that I get that. Oh, you wouldn't do it anymore. But, no, I would I'm serious. Like, if I'm vibing with somebody and this guy is walking through this process of changing his life and he believes that God has changed him, I, I, I would give him a chance. I really think that we, I really think that we have to figure out what we're going to do with these men. I mean, if God decided to change their lives, I hate for Donnie McClurkin that he, he actually said, 
He said, I'll, I'll never, I realize I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life. Because okay. that's, Sucks. Then maybe it does suck, but this is what he's choosing to do, and and because of his uh, his inclinations toward one other men, people think I think I'm gonna say, and I'm not talking about you personally, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I think foolish women think that men who were once practicing gay uh, gays are now saying that they are not. They think that they're suddenly cured because they claim the blood of Jesus. No. Why no, is it different? No. For, why is it different for women? Why oh, is come it different? On. Because, are you okay, me? this is the thing. Most again, women. Women, typically, women's sexuality is more fluid than men's. Men's sexuality tends to be very fixed, whether it's female or whether it's male, unfortunately. It tends to be very fixed. And a lot of women don't seem to understand that or they don't want to understand that because people claim, and I'm, I don't know this man's spirituality, whatever, because people claim, you know, that God changed them or whatever. Okay, maybe you're not living or actively uh, in that lifestyle, but that does not mean your in insides and your brain and your your affection is still not there. Don, I mean, to Don, me it's, oh, wait, wait, okay. wait, 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 wait. This yeah, is ba this is really this is really simple. Mm -hmm. And I got to just say this, and it go might ahead, offend Don. some people, but I stopped giving a shit about offending people a long time ago. <laughs> if you have tasted of the penis, <laughs> let's be clear, right? From, this is from the Book of Dawn, okay? <laughs> if you have tasted of the penis, you will forever. It have the taste for the penis. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So, so Crystal, so you're dating this guy who's changing his life. Jesus woke him up in the midst of the midnight hour and led him to the light. Yay for him. And he says, hey, baby, I want to go on a boy's trip this weekend. <laughs> What do you but, say? I mean, that's what I'm saying. If you've changed your life, you're not going to be doing. I mean, like, it's kind of like a crackhead that says, oh, yeah, I'm going down the street. They're not going to do that. And that you have to be wise, obviously, and observe his behavior and don't be like, you know, all oblivious and stuff. But I do believe that if a true change has happened, like seriously, you guys, like mm -hmm. a true change, and we either believe this or we don't. We either believe that God can change That's people. What I was gonna say. We either believe it or we don't. I was gonna say. And if you believe that God can change people, and I personally do, then I would walk okay, through this my, with my somebody. Thing, let me say, I mean, my, my point of view now, personally, me, that's not for me. So I, you know, I would not date somebody that has been in transition or even, I probably, no. I don't think I would even Hell date no. someone that was um, gay and, and now is no longer say gay. But I don't put limits on what God can do. And uh -huh. there, I personally believe that if that is the case, God will pro provide them, bring them the, the right person for them. Mm -hmm. um, mm. But... I mean, another to guy. Me, it's like another nothing's guy different. Like, what about all right. these? You got people, whores who have been changed. Oh, you know, no on. longer. Well, that's what I said. I yeah. said the same well, thing. Wait a minute. But wait a minute. Talking about that, you're the one who says frequently that people, women who have had uh, what do you say, body counts, they can't enjoy sex. They can't enjoy a relationship. No, 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 no. You said that. Hold okay, on. hold okay. on. You said that. So, mom said. Okay, you're gonna say. tell me what I'm I said. This She's gonna say. tell me what I said, I'm and I didn't say this that. To say that in those relationships, if you, not you personally, if you were to marry someone someone from that former lifestyle, that woman <coughs> will probably had no peace in the, in that relationship because she's always going to be concerned about whether or not he's out there, you know, tasting of the penis, as Don said. Yeah, but we are talking <laughs> about something that's very spiritual. Yes, women who have had 45 men and they have not given that over to Christ and they get with their husband and they're sitting there saying, oh, well, he don't please me. Yeah, because I'm, I'm sitting up here competing with 45 other dudes. Yes. Now, if you have given that over to Christ, this is this is a very spiritual thing. And you say, and and y'all, my body count is high. I'm going to tell you that right now, okay? And my husband knows it. However, I have had to give that over to Christ. And in Christ, you are a new creature. Old things have passed away. Mm -hmm. And behold, all things become exactly. new. And you either believe it or you, you don't. And you can you believe, believe it. Wait a minute. You said all things become one new. Well, well, that doesn't mean. Second. I want to give it to Dawn. Okay. Uh, okay. Dawn. Let, me, let me just say this. Go ahead. Uh, as listen, as a member of the Black Slider Support Group, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all all in the walk. I ain't, I, I'm an, I'm a backslider, okay. <laughs> he said a black so, slider. Backslider, <laughs> black slider, whatever you want to call ahead, me. I'll go ahead, Listen, I think what we're confusing here is really basic. If you look at the CDC numbers, mm. the fastest growing segment of HIV/AIDS heterosexual Black women, mm. because of what you guys are up here talking about. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is. If a man has engaged in homosexual sex, 
for many years. They're triggers that exist in his life. Exactly. So I get it. The Lord is amazing. I trust in him too. But as a backslider, in the backslide support group, we, they come. I got my group coming in a few minutes. We're going to drink and have wings. The fact of the matter is, women, black women especially, live in an environment called the down low. Mm. A lot of people don't understand how that exists in our community at a very high level. This guy spent his life as a bottom homosexual, not a top, but a mm. bottom, okay? The problem is, once a man has been entered, that changed the whole game, guys. But look, I look. I have to tell people in the dating environment: touch my ass, I'm gonna catch a case. Okay, I ain't in all that. Don't be doing all that. You gotta have that conversation on the first day. It's Valentine's Day. Somewhere in America, some guy is sitting at a table who'd have been touched by a man is trying to convince a woman that he's changed his life through Christ Jesus. Exactly. No, to Crystal's point about, you know, the Bible says all things become new and KJ, that's fine. It does say that, but that does not mean wisdom is, is mutually exclusive of that. See, I don't, I think Christians put these, Christians put these things, oh, well, God says this, you either believe it or not. I can believe that and I can still exercise wisdom and discernment. No, I agree. You're missing it. I still think you're missing it. Again, this, yep. these types of people may not be for you. Yeah, yeah. You oh. know, may, it won't be for me. It's not for me. Right. I'm saying that. I it's would. Not, I but, would. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> some, I mean, this, I believe that, again, if that person has been changed, if it is, ch if he or she is changed, you know, God will bring about somebody that, you know, can is conducive to them. Right. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you know, and you talking about entered in, like I personally have girlfriends and you know how we talk and we talk and I know a few of my girlfriends that got husbands, good and grown, that would, that like to be entered in with the fingers. <laughs> and so that's what I'm saying. We, we, we fake if we're believing that, you know, that this is just not something that like people go through if they have not been in a spiritual walk with Christ where they, okay. they are Chris, no longer... Chris, Chris, of Chris, course they can, go, Chris, they can go through that, but I'm sorry, hey, Darren, what were you saying? How many fingers? <laughs> <laughs> how many fingers? That's the question. You right said there. Internet. Stay right there. How many <laughs> fingers? Okay. So there's some dudes out here want three, four fingers. That's exactly. A okay? So, 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 so I just kind of think that like it's it you know it's perversion and once yeah, you've yeah, been yeah, yeah. Once perversion you once foot, once yeah. yeah once all of that is perversion but once you've given yourself over to Christ I do believe and I know like you said I'm not talking about the person that's living on the down low and I'm not talking about the people who are spreading HIV rampantly like right. I mean and, and it's and, it, I, and I mean it's been happening in the black community for a long time now ever since it, it, it ever since HIV became a thing mm -hmm. I what I will say is is that once a person has declared and named the name of Christ, you you hope that those things are no longer an issue. Now, there is a possibility that um, you can have a dude that's fake. That's what I'm saying, like a person on the down low. So why wouldn't you take a guy who's saying, hey, I changed my life. Will you walk through this with me? And the answer to that, if, if you know, it, I think it's OK. Everybody's but, but worthy Crystal, of love. Think about it. Crystal, guy, guy kills three people, goes to prison, does 31 years, gets out, wants to date you he's changed he found christ in prison you date him y'all y'all are excellent you you are the, i'm an ultra maga i'm an ultra ah, christian and i do believe him? yes i would why wouldn't why would i not like why would i not i think that i think that women have such high standards for men so don't get me on my my mail we we I, i'm telling you i'm like walking through this dating app with um with my friends and they're like oh he's too short oh he's too this she's like Those men have a hard time and so yes i do believe that if somebody is saying that god changed their lives time will tell and you walk through it with the person especially if you're vibing and you like them you walk through it and then you ask God to show you if it's true or if it's not. That's my that's my take on everything. Well, are y'all Pentecostal? <laughs> yes. No, I'm, I'm sanctified. Holy, you gotta be holiness. sanctified. Holiness for sure. <laughs> so you don't even believe James Qu Cleveland no. was a homosexual. <laughs> I probably do. No, I believe that a lot of folks is out here batting for that team. Mm -hmm. I do believe that I do I do believe that if God has truly changed your life, then that's no longer an issue. Okay. All right. Okay. All okay. Right. That's but don't be mad at don't be mad at mm -hmm. Puffy. Cause as soon as the people come get him, he gonna get saved. I'm telling you right ah! now. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but we be acting like we be clutching our pearls when we hear this stuff. We knew it. We knew it with R. Kelly. We knew R. Kelly was with Aaliyah. Everybody, oh my God. Yeah. We all knew this stuff about Puffy. We knew about Usher. We all knew it. Yeah. It's the truth. Okay. We had another super chatter too. Oh, we have a question for our guests. Yep. All right. Let me see here. Uh, can you read that, Shelly? Um, Critics ask him if he dated a woman uh, who's been with women, or does he or you ladies think the same as a gay man who is no longer gay? Stop the double standard. Okay, it's, not, it's actually not a double double standard. Really if you isn't. understand uh, the Human emotional, the, the I think exactly. women, the women is emotional. Men exactly. are much, it's That's much more physical. Okay. It's much more physical with guys. Exactly. And anybody who don't understand that is out of their damn mind. The exactly. fact is that a man will lay with a man, okay, and allow a man to enter him. That is not only, no, 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 that is, there's a, there's something to that that we don't even understand. There's a demonic situation to that. People talk about STDs, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. I'm talking about sexually transmitted demons, right? Mm -hmm. So every time you lay with someone, you take on something of them, right? Yeah. So the fact of the matter is, if that's your choice, that's your choice. But don't be crying to your girlfriends when you find out Hernando is a homosexual in the midst of the midnight hour. Hey, I mean, I said, I said that, Don, what you're saying. Women's sexuality is more fluid than men. Absolutely. Men are typically fixed. They either want to be uh, male, uh, male, female, or male, right. male. And a mm -hmm. lot of people don't understand that. They think that, like, like, well, like you were saying, my sexuality is not fluid, baby. I'm gonna tell you strictly dick. Women's <laughs> can be. Women's can be, and it's typically like Don said because of the emotional, whereas men is with, with more physical. So again, it's not you personally, but in general, this is the sexual breakdown or the sexuality, how it really functions in men and women. That's the truth. Because if you look at, look at, let me give you an example. You ever see women out with their girlfriends and they're getting drunk and they're kissing and hanging out and hugging them? You don't see that with straight guys. You see right. that with straight women a lot. It's gross. Huh? They're not straight. If you, you wait, wait, kissing... wait. No, these no. drunk ass no. women, you see that all the time, these drunk ass women. And <laughs> guess what? If my guy friends say, dude, I got to pee, go with me. I'll be like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Y'all go sit in the bathroom with your girlfriend while she take a pee. Yes or no? Yeah. Right, right. Uh, I think it's I think it's more of a um a cultural mm. and thing. I think it's more because now if you if you see um the way this society is going, now they're trying to feminize and these men mm -hmm. more so so now more men are getting involved in doing things like this. Yeah. Uh, and so we've just been so uh, culturally, mm -hmm. the, the, the genders, that, that part portion that you're talking about has gone one way, but we're, we are starting to see that they're trying to feminize these men, where now men, you know, um, they don't like sit, standing up anymore. Mm -hmm. And so they, you, if you're sitting <laughs> down and they say, hey man, you want to talk to me while I'm on the toilet? No, wait, wait, doing. wait, 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 no, no, hell to the no, hell to the no. Ain't yeah, no man I'm not, I'm getting ready to stand up and talk to his buddy uh, while he's on the toilet. Yeah. That is gay as hell. Exactly, okay? and, and that's, but that we are in a perverted society, and I think that, like, I think to say that it's acceptable for women to be in that lifestyle and it's okay because they're technically not getting their booty hole blasted, which, I mean, <laughs> sometimes they are. You probably yeah. about that, too. I mean... We, uh, this is what I'm saying. The culture is changing. Ooh. We are seeing a lot more men. Right. They are not so strict about having their behinds penetrated. <laughs> and when I say that, I mean either with... Hey, um, where y'all live? Because I ain't coming there. I heard it. I heard it. Like, my friends have tell, told me. Yeah, and and they think I forgot, but I did not. Yeah, I and mean, this is why I, this is and my friends don't tell me stuff like that because first of all, I don't even want to hear it. Okay. Well, they tell they tell you when you're uh, they're dating. They uh, tell you when they're dating, and they have no idea that they're about to marry this person. But even so, but and this I, is why I only say that I only TV. say that to say because I've said this on the show before. You know, we always try to put limitations and and lines like, oh, women do this, but men won't do this, and this and this. It is all sin. It is all wrong. So, you know, we, 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 one minute you say, oh, well, women are fluid, but men aren't so fluid. No, 
it's wrong for men to lay with men. It's wrong for women to lay Agreed. with women. Agree. And so, you know, I agree with that call. The, the 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 person who made the comment. It's all wrong. And when we do things like try to single out certain uh, things over more others, we fall victim to the lie of the enemy. Agree. That's part of what they try to do. It is all wrong. Like you said, Dawn, it's soul ties. You mm. land down with these people. It is all wrong. But, but again, and but again, God, ladies, ladies, listen to me for a minute. From the book of Dawn, right? <laughs> Chapter 2. <laughs> Okay, chapter two, verse three. <laughs> you can't turn a trick into a treat, okay? Mm -hmm. And there's always triggers for people who have moved on in any scenario. Cocaine, crack, vagina. Look, I have been a victim of vaginal incarceration, right? So it is very important to me. It's very important to me that I focus at this point in my life and take my monkey ass home to Quetta Jean Johnson from the Johnson family, right? Because <laughs> if I allow myself or expose myself to what can be viewed as triggers, mm -hmm. then I fall prey to what I saw in my past, guys. Look, mm -hmm. we all got a past, right? Yep. And I think to accepting your past and not letting your history be a mystery puts you in a better position to move forward and mm -hmm. stay away from the narrative. Because this is a narrative, I promise you. This mm -hmm. is the greatest push in the history of America transgender, homosexual, look, the LGBT is mad at the trannies right now, okay? Because they messing their shit all up, exactly. okay? I got a gay friend, he's like, dude, what, <laughs> what happened to just being gay? You know what I mean? I'm like, you tell me, motherfucker. <laughs> all right, Don, thank you. Uh, thank yeah. you so much. Again, guys, for you guys who just tuning in, this is Don Miller from the Don Miller Show. Uh, you can find him on Florida Man Radio, uh, and we just we we definitely have to have you back on again, <laughs> yes. Don. Thank you so much for now, joining us. Take care, us. ladies. Thank you for allowing me to join you. Take care. All right, bye, you bye, too. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> that was funny. Yes, it was. All right, that was really good. We want to do something a little different since it's Valentine's Day. Kind of talk about that topic. So uh, if you guys are watching us for the first time, this is Poppin' Politics. We are live every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Uh, so definitely subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know every time we go live. Yep. All right. So um, we do have one last oh, topic for tonight. All right. Wanted to talk about um, a, tw a tweet that... Uh, uh, What's her name? Um, Hillary Clinton put out. Yes. Mm. So she puts out here after the Super Bowl says, congratulations to Taylor's boyfriend and the entire Kansas City Chiefs community. So that was really bizarre. I mean, the way she uh, she she corresponded or referenced uh, Travis Kelsey. That's his name, right? Mm -hmm. Taylor's boyfriend. And so I want to kind of just throw that out there to you ladies. This is what we're seeing now with the Democrats. You know, they're trying to make this matriarchy. So, you know, he's a, a, a well-accomplished football player of his own right, but he, she has to refer to him as Taylor's boyfriend, meaning Taylor Swift. What are your thoughts? I, I'm... It's really meaningless, number one, from Hillary Clinton, number one. Number two, to your question, the Democrats have been making the matriarchy since they started breaking down black families back in the, uh, the 50s and 60s. So this is nothing new, okay? So Taylor, whatever she is and does, I don't care. I mean, what is what you say to Taylor's boyfriend? Uh, uh, Travis Kelsey. I, I mean, I don't even know why that needed to, you know, be put out like that. But nevertheless, she did. It's meaningless. It means nothing to me. It means, probably means nothing into millions of people. Uh, Kansas won, Travis is a jerk, and Taylor is a drunk. What are your thoughts on it, Crystal? I just kind of think that I expect nothing l less from Hillary. I mean, like, she is... You remember she's the traveling pantsuit girl, like right, you know, right. like oh yeah, you know we're we're just as good as men. She's got a history of like the matri matriarchy. Like she, I remember watching an interview where she was mad because she had to put on makeup, and then Bernie Sanders didn't when she was like running against him for the oh, primaries. Wow. Like she is so like. She wants to be a dude so bad, and so the fact that she's encouraging this young girl where. <clears throat> 
you know, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, they have a new relationship. I just would tell uh, if if she is listening to to me, Taylor, don't don't fall for the trap, girlfriend. Love your man. Enjoy your man. And don't listen to all the hoopla from these old bags who uh, man is cheating on them. And she run around here trying to get mad at the, the woman. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and they didn't like it when Trump said it. You remember Trump was like in the debate. He was Thank like. Oh yeah, the, the honey, honey. Let me get my honey. Oh, said, they okay. didn't like yeah, in said, the debate. His Say his name again. Trump. Uh, he was Trump was like, uh, Trump was like, y'all worried about me saying grab them by the boot. He said, but y'all not talking about how Hillary treated these women mm. who Bill Clinton accused right. of. Right. Um, That's true. You know, they I mean, Bill Clinton of they accused and sexually exactly, them. and how she was following them and ruined their lives and all of this. Like she, I don't expect anything. Yeah, from her. Yeah. I mean, yeah. whatever. <laughs> All right. Um, and then lastly, just um, news out tonight in Kansas City, I believe mm -hmm. as they were uh, celebrating their win, uh, a shooter uh, shot several people. Yeah, I one believe. person died. I oh. think they were, when I, when I last saw the news, it was 10 people total. Wow. One person died at a, at a parade, at a parade. Right. So I'm uh, definitely thinking about those people and their families, our mm -hmm. hearts and prayers. Uh, go out to them. I mean, what is going on? In the Mental world? health. You know, that's e that's evil. I, we got to talk about this again because, again, you know, I stand on that there's a difference between mental illness and evil, mm -hmm. and we need to be clear about which is which. Yeah, that's yeah. True. I think I I I do believe that um, people are disturbed, and and I personally believe that mental health is evil only because I mean that's kind of what. The Bible says, I mean, it is like, you remember the guy who was tormented and, you know, he was tormented by demons and God told him to yeah, come out different. and they said lesions. And I do yeah. believe that a lot of these people are tormented. And and I think that it has a lot to do with the culture because we have a culture of entitlement. We have a culture of victimization and all of those things lead to people being very depressed and people being very sad and unhappy with their lives. And then so yeah. you get this. If everywhere you look. <clears throat> or where you live, work, if you were told that you yeah. are a victim, mm -hmm. then victims want what? They want justice. Yeah. So if you don't get that, then you are going to feel as if you are being ignored and neglected. And over time, the buildup, if you are not set straight in your thinking and in your being, if you will, if you don't have a purpose for life, you're going to think you're a victim. Somebody owes you something. And many times you're going to go out and get it the wrong way. Yeah. In this case, taking someone else's life. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the Democrats will leave it to gun control. Kill, kill, kill. Right. No, I'm saying no. They'll no, say, the Democrats, yeah, the Democrats will say gun control. And right. Democrats will say, oh, this is why we need more guns. So I'm leery of a lot of these stories. Yeah. 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 Um, we're definitely going to continue to follow that and uh, keep those people who lost loved ones in our thoughts and prayers. Yeah. All right. So this does bring us to the end of the show tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Please continue the conversation by checking us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and subscribe. Subscribe, hit that notifications bell so you always know when we post new content. Continue the comments and share, 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 like, like, like. Um, that certainly helps to grow our content, grow our platform, and we appreciate the support. All right, we do. Uh, before I close out, we do have another super chatter. Want to thank a night tonight, Jeff. Oh, happy Valentine's Day, ladies. Oh, yes, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. We certainly appreciate you, Jeff. You're one of our favorites. So thank you so much for work for uh, hanging out with us tonight on Valentine's Day. <laughs> yes. All right. So again, you can check us out on our website at www.popandpoliticslive.com. Remember, we have a merch store, guys. Mm -hmm. So if you go onto our website, popandpoliticslive.com, you click on shop and you'll see all of the merchandise that we're selling right That's now. Right. Some really cool shirts, mugs. So certainly if you want to support us, that's the best way to do it. And then send us a photo of you in your shirt or in your mug, and we will spotlight and highlight you on the show. Yes. And we'll be All wearing right. owls over the next couple of weeks. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're going to wear our shirts and our different merch. So definitely um, go on and, and shop. we got some really cool um, merchandise on there for you guys. For sure. All right. So we look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, 
count your blessings and live a life of purpose. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>